Welcome to art class, guys. Today, we are talking about observational drawing. And in this unit, we are going to be building those observational skills, which again, is just looking at stuff, looking real careful and noticing a lot. We're, al we're also going to try to use a range of value, remembering that value is the lightness or darkness of a color or tone. And we're going to carefully pay attention to detail to use an artistic technique or tool called an artist's grid. And this grid is going to help us to recreate a photograph as a drawing, or if you have a material at home, a painting that is unbelievably awesome. So I like to show this picture here with Chuck Close, a famous American artist who is known for using this gridding technique. He looks at a photograph, which he's drawn a grid on top of. He draws a complementary, that means the same layout, shape, and number of boxes, both going across and up and down, but they might be bigger boxes. So we see the painting is obviously bigger than the photograph. Chuck Close will then fill in each box with whatever he sees in the photograph. Chuck Close is a little bit different. As he's used this technique for a long, long time, his boxes have become more and more abstract. So rather than copying every shape directly, although most of the shapes are about spot on, he uses colors that are appropriate and then wants you to look from a little further away so that the each abstract box comes together to form a photo of a person or a painting of a person, rather. One other cool thing about Chuck Close, Unfortunate for him, but pretty cool to hear. As an artist, he started, you know, he's been making art for decades. And over time, he's come down with a debilitating illness, which has robbed him of his ability to walk. Because these are such giant paintings, he often had to use ladders to paint them. But without being able to walk, he had to work with some other engineers and designers to build a whole array of tools that could help him. So Chuck Close is a wonderful example of an artist who is persevering through challenges and who is able to use and make incredible art and be very successful despite having some disabilities. So Chuck Close is a really fascinating artist and a great, you know, a great figure to look at. He also does a lot of these observational grid drawings. Now, observational drawing is all about observing things, looking and looking carefully. If we look at these three horses on screen, we notice the difference between them is primarily about the amount of detail included. So on the very far left, there's very little detail. It's just the outline of the horse with an eyeball. In the middle drawing, we see a little bit more detail. We see the texture of the mane. The mane exists and has a texture. We see a color in the eyes. We see a texture in the ears, a little bit of texture and lines for flavor in the body that indicate where shadows and things are. All the way on the right, we see a lot more. We see shading on almost everything. Very little of the horse is pure white. It looks shaded. It looks somewhat hairy. It looks like a horse ought to look. So again, the big difference between these three drawings is the amount of detail and value that the artist used. Generally, the more we observe, the more detail we see. And the more detail we see and then add to our drawing, the more visual interest we create. Again, for this unit, we're focusing on using a range of values and careful observational drawing with our gridding tool. We'll talk about those tools in a moment. Remember, value is the lightness or darkness of a color or tone and it adds to the sense of realism in our artwork. We wanna to try to produce seven or more values of gray from the darkest dark you can make to the lightest light that you can make. Do we see seven values of gray in this picture? Take a moment. I see a black in the shadow here and a little bit in the bottom of the tail for one value, a very dark, gray here in a double shadow for a second another dark but not quite as dark gray in this shadow making a third i see a 
more of a dark mid-tone for a fifth or a fourth value, a mid-tone for a fifth value, a light mid-tone for a sixth, a light tone, a very light tone, a pure highlight making us to nine, and then a tenth value of pure white in the sky, and in a few very, very selective spots in the horse itself. So I see 10 values in here. If we go back a step, how many values do we see in this horse in the middle? Mm, maybe two. How many in the one all the way to the left? One. How many in this one on the right? One, two, three, four, maybe five values in that horse on the right with extremely accurate line drawing. So the more we use a range of values, the more appealing and interesting our drawing is going to look. Now, you might be asking how, how, how can you harness this power? Well, there's a lot of ways. We're going to practice a relatively simple one, which is using a gridding technique. Basically, you're going to measure and mark out a uniform grid on a photograph. I do have a helpful tutorial for how to measure out and mark out these grids. I actually have two tutorials, one using a ruler and one making do without, because if we're doing distance learning, sometimes we don't have all the things that we need and we have to make do. Once you have a, a grid measured and marked on a photograph, you're going to use a piece of paper to draw a complementary grid, one with the same number and layout of same shaped boxes. On this example here, we see that there are seven boxes going across the top of the drawing from left to right, and there are 10 boxes going down the drawing from top to bottom. We see the same number, on the photograph. We see that the draw the boxes are square in the drawing and in the photograph. So this person laid things out well and obviously had a great deal of success drawing this picture of the woman that they drew. Once you have your grid drawn on the photograph and a complementary grid drawn on a piece of drawing paper, then you're just going to fill it in. And I recommend Starting with the contour lines, those are the lines that make up the outside of a shape. On this elephant example that we see here, most of the contour lines are really hard edged, dark black lines. I would recommend two things as you are working on your projects. One, on your drawing paper, make your grid lines lightly. If you draw an elephant or a person or whatever you're going to draw, and there's a bunch of big, heavy black lines draw going all through it, you're not going to be psyched about that. You're going to have a better experience if your grid lines are very light. And I would even make your contour lines fairly light. I recommend doing all of your contour drawing before you do any shading. Sometimes people get really invested and they start, you know, they draw a couple of boxes and then shade them in. The trouble with that, if you have an incorrect measurement on any of your boxes, and then you shade them in and get those boxes finished, correcting that error takes so much more of a challenge. So I strongly recommend finishing the contour lines first and then shading in with seven or more values from black to white. Now that's the overview. I'm not gonna take a lot more of your time, but I do wanna pause just for a moment. I wanna show you the website for this unit. That slideshow and this video will both be under this link. There will be two parts, the slideshow and a video. I also want to point out this slideshow right here, which we already covered in class. I'm not going to spend forever on it, but it does remind us and demonstrate about value and how we might use value in a variety of ways. I do have our learning goals on this, as well as the specific tasks that you're challenged to do. The appetizer is something that we should be doing on our first week of distant learning. The same with the bread for the table. Here we have all of the procedures for the main course. Next, or one of our projects, or one of our assignments for this, our second week of distant learning is going to be to choose a photograph that has a strong contrast and good detail. I'll give you more direction about that. I want to point out this is that tutorial that I mentioned, helping you to lay out your grid. It demonstrates exactly step by step how to put a grid onto a photograph. 
I also have a few options of troubleshooting to help make distant learning easier for folks who don't have rulers or all the tools they need. And a video showing how that can work as well. So our goal here is to start with the preliminary tasks, and then we're going to move on to choosing a photograph that has strong contrast, good detail, and then we're going to put a grid on it, make a complementary grid on a drawing paper, and draw the contour lines, shade them in, and make a really awesome artwork. Now, the last thing I want to say about this, this technique makes it so easy to really do a great job if you don't overthink it. Let this, let the grid break the drawing into smaller parts. Each smaller part is simpler to draw. Draw the simple parts, connect the dots, and you're going to make something really awesome. I think you're going to be really psyched and proud of your work. So let me know if you have any questions or how I can help you. Otherwise, happy making.